In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Ghost, one God. Amen. The Apostle Paul, when writing to the Ephesians, quotes from Psalm uh, 68 and saying, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. And he then goes on to enumerate some of these gifts, naming the ministries of apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors and teachers. These, therefore, are known as the ascension gifts of Christ which are poured out in fullness on the day of Pentecost. Elsewhere, the Apostle speaks of specific spiritual gifts distributed among the faithful. There's sometimes a tendency to set the charismatic ministries and the institutional ministries of the church in opposition, as if they should be viewed in antithesis to each other. However, this is not how the Orthodox Church understands matters, nor is it supported by a careful reading of all that St Paul has to say. We know the net dangers inherent in an unrestrained exercise of the charismata. We note that the Apostle Paul offered guidance to the Christians of Corinth about their proper exercise, and there are many cases of excess and misuse both in church history and in modern times. The two are not to be seen as distinct but rather as interwoven threads revealing the fullness of ministry. The bishop is not merely some functionary called to administration, but receives divine grace to exercise a ministry full of Pentecostal Pentecostal grace. In the Coptic tradition, the ordination prayer for a bishop asks the Lord to fill him with healing graces and instructive speech that he may be a guide of the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a teacher of the ignorant, a lamp in the world, dividing the word of truth, being a true shepherd, giving his life for the sheep. One of the chief ministries of the early church was that of the deacon, though sadly today it is much diminished, especially in the Western Christian tradition. Deacons reflect the earthly ministry of our Saviour, who laid aside his lordship in order to minister as a servant or deacon for all. Indeed, all Christians are called to participate in Christ's diaconia for the salvation of mankind. So extensive was the role and ministry of the deacon in the early church that his ministry was soon subdivided by the introduction of deputies to share the burden of this ministry. Hence, the introduction of subdeacons, readers, and a host of other so called minor orders. Until 1972, the Roman Catholic Church still conferred the four minor orders of acolyte, exorcist, lector, and doorkeeper. And in the Coptic tradition, all the minor orders, exhortus or psalmist, an agnostos or reader, and epidiaconos or subdeacon, are referred to by the generic name of deacon although there is a distinctive form of ordination with different charges for each order. The Apostle Paul makes it clear that these ascension gifts of Christ are not given to individuals for their personal use, but for the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, they are for the collective benefit of the people of God. The exercise of these gifts as diaconia takes the form of different manifestations of brotherly love, whether as service to the physically or spiritually sick, to the needy, to prisoners, help given to the churches or to the apostles and the other ministers, as can be seen in the case of the many men and women mentioned by St Paul as his collaborators. St Paul sees these ministries as protecting the church from error, because if we're built up as the body of Christ, we will no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the cunning of men, by their craftiness in deceitful wiles. But rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way to him who is the head into Christ, 
from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every joint with which it is supplied, when each part is working properly, makes bodily growth and upbuilds itself in love. This image of the joints of the body is organic, just as the church is intended to be. We need to discard the image of an organisation, like some modern international corporation, with its tiered hierarchical structure and its tiers of managers reaching to the top. Although the church possesses its higher and hierarchy, it is one of interdependence, not subordination. At times in the New Testament, diaconia and apostolate are used synonymously as when St. Peter refers to the appointment of Matthias as part of this ministry or as a share in our service. If characterised by the spirit of diaconia, all are called to share in the apostolic ministry as ministers of God and fellow labourers in the gospel of Christ and as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. The apostles became the servants of believers because of Christ that it is not themselves whom they are proclaiming, but Christ Jesus the Lord. In the charge following the ordination of a reader, he is reminded that he has received the first rank of the priesthood, and that when the people see your good growth and progress, they may recommend you for higher rank and be proud of you always. I often suspect that this may cause some trepidation to one who has accepted the call to serve the church in the humblest degree of ministry, who may now feel anxious that more may someday be required of him. Of course, when we place our lives in the hands of God and trust in his grace, we embark on a journey with an uncertain end, as far as we are concerned. God, however, knows exactly where he wants us to be. When we place ourselves at the service of others, our individual skills, needs, ambitions and desires are no longer entirely ours but now become available for all. This is not the natural way of men, and it places burdens and responsibilities which we might prefer not to carry. St Paul reminded the Romans that we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbour for his good, to build him up, for even Christ did not please himself. Hence the solemn setting apart with prayer of each ministry and the promise of divine guide, grace and guidance corresponding to the responsibilities of the order. May Christopher, soon to be a reader in the house of God, be faithful to his name, bearing Christ to all whom he meets, so that he may receive God's mercy along with all those who please God from the beginning. Peace be with you.